Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about black hole DNS, what it is, why you care. There's a lot of different things about DNS we could talk about. Of course, it's a pretty complex thing. Uh, but today we're gonna to talk about black hole and um, why you would need it and all of that. All right, so I'll just put black hole DNS up there. And so the first thing that we'll talk about is uh, just the basics of DNS. Whenever you have a client that requests a, a domain name, let's just say like example.com for example, then, uh, then that ultimately needs to be turned into an IP address and that's what DNS is all about. So that's gonna, that DNS request is gonna come into some DNS server out here and that DNS server ultimately through potential recursive lookups or whatever is gonna grab the IP address and return that IP address to the client so that client can then go and uh, search up that web page. All right, so let's say it's you know 1.2.3.4, for example. All righty, so that's all good and well, and DNS does a great job of what it does, but it's just, it's almost like a phone book where you ask someone, hey, what's your phone number? And then they just get, here's the person's phone number. That's what DNS does. And it does a phenomenal job of that lookup and that response of the correct IP address. Um, the problem though is that there's not a whole lot of security inherently built in, into DNS. And so DNS was uh, developed back in like the mid 80s. And so, you know, it wasn't like, hey, we need to, you know, incorporate all this security. It was more just functional uh, where, you know, you look up a domain name and it gives you an IP address. Okay, so let's say, for example, that this example.com domain has been hacked by some bad guy hacker out there and let's say that there's malware on that site now and you know about it and so you wanna keep your client from going to that specific domain name. So whenever your client says, hey, what's example.com, then you want your DNS uh, services, your DNS server to come back, not with the correct IP address, but with a different IP address that may go to a, uh, like some remediation page, for example, saying, hey, this is not a good domain name right now. Um, Another, th another thing you could do is instead of uh, sending back a remediation IP address, you may send back like a, a, a loopback address so that they just don't really go anywhere. Or you, could, or you could reject it altogether. So here's a couple of different options. So you could just reject uh, the DNS request. You could send them out to some you know, remediation uh, page you know, out there that's got a few you know, uh, notes about, hey, this is not good or whatever. All right, if you reject, if you reject the DNS request altogether, then the client's gonna type in the domain name, they're gonna hit go, and then they're just gonna sit there and they're not gonna have any idea what's going on. Um, and so that may not be the greatest user experience uh, option. Uh, whereas the remediation page will at least give them something and tell them, hey, this is, this is not a good place for you to be going right now. All right, so that's the idea of black hole DNS. When a client, uh, asks for a domain name that you know now is bad, whether it's got malware on it or whatever, um, then you don't want to respond with that IP address, you want to respond with a different one. And so you essentially black hole this, you know, this bad domain name. All right, so let's bring this over to the big IP um, example. So you have a client who now is requesting DNS, uh, you know, a DNS lookup. And so you're gonna put a big IP here in the middle, of course, and in this example, we're gonna provision LTM, the local traffic manager, along with DNS services. And you have to have DNS services uh, added, by the way, to make all this stuff happen, <clears throat> to be able to do the DNS stuff. All right, so you have a client comes in, you're gonna be answering the DNS request here from the big IP now. Um, and so if they ask for some website that is not good, uh, I'll use the example malware.com, that's m-w. Uh, dot com, say it stands for malware. So that's not a good one, let's say. All right, what you can do here on the big IP, now that you got LTM DNS services provision, you can add an I rule to the uh, virtual server that listens for this DNS traffic. And, uh, and you can do a few things with this I rule. And in fact, this I rule already exists out there on Dev Central. We'll link to it so you can, uh, you can check it out. But functionally, what this thing does is it's going to look at the domain name that comes in from the client's uh, request and it's gonna check that against a known list of bad domain names. And if the requested domain name matches a bad one, then it's gonna come back with a different IP address, uh, maybe the remediation page IP address, and you actually set that IP address in the iRule as well. 
Uh, so you can set it to whatever you want, or you can do any kind of action that we just talked about a second ago in this I rule. The I rule that's written out there has a remediation page. Um, and, and so, and in fact, the I rule's in two different parts. The first part simply checks for the domain name against a known bad list of domain names. And then the second part of the I rule, which is actually on a set, you would attach that to a different virtual server, uh, actually has the remediation page built into it, which did you know you can do that in an I rule? You can actually build out a web page fully in the I rule. So that's kind of a cool thing. All right, so again, in this example, client request malware.com, and the I rule is gonna have uh, what it uses as a data group. So I'll put DG right there, a data group. And in this data group, let's say it's got malware.com because that's a bad uh, domain name and we don't want people going there. All right, so the request came in. Sure enough, that checks right here, check. Uh, it's on the bad boy list. And so you're gonna come back, the I rule is gonna come back with a response IP of, yeah, let's say this was supposed to be you know 1.1.1.1 or whatever. But you have set your remediation page or your response IP address in this I rule. You've set it to something that's going to take any kind of bad request to the place that you want them to go. And let's just say that that's 2.2.2.2, for example. Alrighty. And located at 2.2.2.2 is the second part of this I rule, which built out the, uh, the remediation page. And that is the remediation page. So I'm gonna just put this, you know, remediation page, and maybe it's got a big old, you know, don't go here. And maybe it's got like a, a couple of different knowledge base articles, for example, about, hey, client, did you know that you were trying to access, you know, a web page that, or a domain name that's, that's known, you know, malware? Uh, maybe that's because you've got some malware loaded on your machine already. And here's a couple of knowledge base articles to help you clean that up, or you can put whatever you want on this page, frankly. Build it out however you want to. Another kind of cool thing, again, this I rule that's out there on Dev Central, it will link to uses a data group uh, to, to list out all of the known bad IP or the known bad domain names. Um, sometimes it gets a little clunky, it gets a little tough to manage that because someone's got to go in there and add to that list or take away from that list or whatever. Uh, and it can be a, a, a difficult process sometimes. So another cool thing you can do with an I rule is a, is a sideband connection. And so you can do a sideband out here to a third party list. And let's say you've got a, a good you know, company that you work with and they maintain all these of uh, this domain name list of, of bad IP or bad domain names. And so you can do a sideband connection to their list. You can check the requested domain name against their list, come back with the response. And if it checks, then you know, if it's on that bad list, you can do exactly what we've talked about. Uh, if it's not, then of course you respond with the correct IP address, just like you would with any DNS request. Um, so anyway, so you want to keep your customers, you want to keep your clients safe out there. And so, you know, when, whether knowingly or not, they're, they're asking for this bad domain name, uh, you don't want to let them go there. And so this is the intelligence that you can add on to DNS, uh, you know, and again, the DNS back in the mid eighties, you know, they weren't really doing security stuff on DNS back then when it was first built. So this is some of the intelligence of, from a security perspective, you can put on top of that. Um, so black hole those bad malicious requests, keep your uh, customers happy, keep your own internal network safe, everybody loves it. And uh, so yeah, so I hope you've learned a couple of things here today. Uh, get out there and, and copy and paste that iRule as you need to. Uh, it's free on Dev Central. So thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video and we'll see you guys out there in the community.